What's up everybody? It is Mr. Boylan back for a thrilling video here. We are going to explain how atoms form covalent bonds and construct electron dot formulas to illustrate covalent bonds. Turns out there are two types of covalent bonds and we are going to explain the difference between what's called polar covalent and non-polar covalent bonding. And then two, we are going to classify a bond as either polar covalent or non-polar covalent based on electronegativity differences. Those periodic trends coming on back. Never going away. Okay, so covalent bonding turns out can be either what we call non-polar covalent or polar covalent. And as you take a look at your screen, here are a couple of animations to sum up polar covalent and non-polar covalent. As you take a look at the animation on the left, that illustrates a polar covalent bond. And as you take a look at the animation on the right between the two atoms of hydrogen, that is a non-polar covalent bond. And we're gonna focus on these two animations throughout this video. Now, let's start with non-polar covalent bonds. This is a covalent bond in which the bonding electrons are shared equally. Compartir. Equally by the bonded atoms. So take a look at the animation between two atoms of hydrogen. They are gonna share the electrons equally because essentially they are gonna have the same attraction for each of those electrons. They each have the same effective core charge. Neither one of those atoms is gonna do a better job of attracting the electrons than the other. Nonpolar covalent. Generally speaking, nonpolar covalent bonds occur between atoms with electronegativity differences of zero to 0 0.4. And as you look at a periodic table of electronegativity, basically what we're saying is the atoms, in order to be nonpolar covalent and share their electrons equally, need to have relatively similar levels of attraction for that pair of electrons. So as you take a look at your notes, I really love this image. It sums up all of the bonding types that we've talked about. Notice that on the left of the spectrum there, we have nonpolar covalent bonds. Here the electrons are shared equally. There's very little to no electronegativity difference between those atoms. Polar covalent bond, on the other hand, is a covalent bond in which the bonded atoms have an unequal attraction for the shared electrons. So they are not sharing equally. Someone is hogging those electrons. Let's take a look at this animation between two non-metal atoms, this time an atom of hydrogen and an atom of oxygen. The atom of oxygen is gonna hog that electron for a much longer time than the hydrogen atom will. Still sharing, but not, but not equal sharing. Those electrons aren't spending equal time between the two atoms. However, the electronegativity differences aren't far enough apart to be considered ionic. The oxygen atom isn't gonna completely rip the electrons away from hydrogen. So again, two different types of covalent bonding. Nonpolar covalent, where the electrons are shared equally, illustrated by those two atoms of hydrogen, and you've got your polar covalent illustrated by the atom of hydrogen and atom of oxygen. Someone is gonna be hogging the electrons in that bond. With polar covalent bonds, generally the electronegativity difference between the two atoms is gonna be between 0.4 and 1.7. So again, as you take a look at your periodic table, the electronegativity values are gonna be fairly similar, but not as close as we see in nonpolar covalent bonds. As you come back to this thriller of an image, Notice in pol polar covalent bonds, there's slight unequal sharing of the electrons. Now, as we start to describe these bonds, you're gonna see what are called dipoles that are used to represent that unequal sharing of electrons. Now, a dipole is represented by an arrow with the head pointing towards the negative pole and a cross tail pointing towards the positive pole. Again, it's just a way for us to show in writing that the electrons are not shared equally. Boom, dipole. So I really love this image to finish us up here. We, we have a couple atoms of hydrogen, which when they come together will form a nonpolar covalent bond. They will, share those they will share those electrons equally. Two atoms of fluorine also will share their electrons equally, nonpolar covalent. However, notice that with hydrogen and fluorine, two nonmetal atoms, but not with super similar electronegativities, one of those atoms is gonna hog the electrons, in this case, fluorine. And so you see your dipole written above the bond, indicating, and it's pointing in the direction of the more electronegative element. 
indicating that that part of the bond is slightly negatively charged. The part with the plus sign is slightly positively charged. You'll also often see those little delta plus and delta minus signs indicating slight positive and slight negative charge or partial positive, partial negative not complete charges like we see in ionic compounds. I wanna take a quick minute and show you a really awesome simulation developed by the University of Colorado, which by the way, you should probably check out if you're considering chemistry because man, they come up with some awesome simulations. Kind of wanna quit teaching, go back to school at the University of Colorado. Use these simulations all day long. Anyway, as you take a look at this simulation, what you can do is change electronegativities between two atoms and observe what happens to the polarity of the bond between those two atoms. Now I've started it out with two atoms that are equal, that are equally electronegative. In other words, we've got a nonpolar covalent bond. Notice there is no bond dipole here. There are no partial charges sharing our electrons equally. However, let's make atom A have a very low electronegativity and atom B have a really high electronegativity. Notice here that the more electronegative atom B is gonna hog those electrons. Recognize that the dipole is pointed facing that more electronegative atom B and don't be confused when you see that delta plus and delta minus. Again, they're just indicating the partial charges that are present in polar covalent bonds. Anyway, I've linked to this simulation on the website. I encourage you to check it out on Friday night when you're looking for a good time.